The Black Death was a disease that ravaged Europe for centuries and killed millions of people. During this time, there was a small group of people who were brave enough to put their own lives on the line and try to fight this illness. These plague doctors believed some pretty weird things and had many creepy behaviors. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest, weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may not be suitable for everyone, viewer discretion is advised. Who are the plague doctors? First of all, these doctors were often not doctors at all, but just volunteers that wanted to help. Can you imagine getting sick and the person treating you is just some guy? Other times, though the doctors were young physicians who were just starting their medical journey, they used plague patients as practice and a way to familiarize themselves with the human body. What did they do? They did this by performing autopsies on the patients they lost. Autopsies not only taught the individuals about the human body, but taught the doctors as a group about the effects of the play on the body. It's questionable whether or not these autopsies were legal or not. Back in the 13th century, the Vatican banned the destruction of a body, but that did not stop them from dissecting those that died. More importantly than the autopsies, at least from a historical perspective, the plague doctors kept incredible records of all of their patients. This included the number of victims and survivors they saw, and people's last wishes. Many of these documents still exist today and give us a great look at what life was like for these people. The doctors also often served as the witnesses to newly signed wills, since they were the only people allowed to be around those that were sick. The way plague doctors operated differed from normal physicians. Normal doctors worked much like they do today, you would be treated if you could pay. Plague doctors, though, would be hired by towns or villages to take care of all of the citizens. They often had their food, water, and lodging all paid for by the town. This meant that an individual's wealth did not matter, everyone was able to be seen for this horrible disease. Unfortunately, this fact did not stop doctors from charging people for special treatments or fake cures. What were their lives like? As interesting as these plague doctors' lives may sound, they were sure to be very lonely people. The law did not allow them to move around the village where they were stationed. The only time they could leave their houses was to see a patient, and then they had to be escorted. This rule was put in place so that they did not spread the illness to the healthy population. Even after they were finished in a specific town, they had to stay in quarantine for another 40 days before they could go out into the world again, after all, they had to make sure that they were not sick. This makes a surprising amount of sense for the Middle Ages, but I can't imagine how lonely that would be. This isolation from society probably made the men a bit odd and eccentric. It's probably also partially why the image of the plague doctor is so associated with death. These lone men in strange get-up centered homes, filled with illness and death, and went back to their own homes where they were still alone. The costume. Speaking of the plague doctor costume, there are several creepy things to know about that. First of all, the costume that everyone thinks it wasn't invented until 1619, well after the Middle Ages and the start of the plague. A man named Charles de Delorme is credited with creating it. He wanted to completely separate his body from the contaminated air outside. His outer robe was made of goat leather and was coated in a wax. Then, under the outer robe was a blouse that would have attached to his shoes, the outfit was completed with gloves, a cane, a hat, and the oh-so-well-known bird mask. It's hard to say, though, if Alorm should get the credit for this getup or not. Around the same time as he was wearing it, it was popular for plays to show plague doctors in a similar outfit. The character of Plague Doctor became so popular to use in the theater that it became a common carnival character in Venice. Did Alorm see this costume and adapt it for practical use, or were the theater and carnival paying homage to the real doctors with this costume. Whichever way it happened, each part of the outfit was essential to it. The clothing was used to fully separate the doctor from the surroundings, just like modern hazmat suits are. The signature hats were used to identify the doctors from a distance, so citizens knew to steer clear of them. The canes that they carried served a variety of purposes. They could use it to touch patients with or move clothing, so they didn't have to touch the sick people with their gloves. This minimized their exposure risk. They could use the cane as a weapon, sometimes family or disparate patients could react violently, and the canes were a good self-defense tool. The canes could also be used as a way to communicate with their assistants about where a body needed to go after death. Then, of course, there were the masks. 
The bird-like shape actually had to do with keeping the air around the doctor's face pure. They believed that illnesses could be caused by miasmas or bad air. So to prevent this from interacting with the doctor, this mask was invented. The eye holes were fitted with glass, so that the doctor could see out, but no air could come in, and the beak was stuffed with herbs and drugs, so that the doctor would breathe these in and not the miasma. These herbs and drugs could include mint, camphor, cloves, straw, laudam, rose petals, myrrh, lavender, juniper berries, storax, and ambergris. I imagine these would have also helped to cover the smells of all the sick and dead they would have to be around. Common Treatments The treatments given by the plague doctors were no walk in the park either. They started with drinking one's own urine or taking medicines, made out of eggshells, flowers, and treacle. Though they could also be rubbed with onion, butter, arsenic, or animal parts. It was common practice to bleed patients or induce diarrhea to try to get the disease out of the body either of those ways. The more sick a patient got, the worse the treatments were. As someone near death, they could expect to be covered in mercury and baked in an oven. Nostradamus, famed astrologer and prophesier, was a physician during the time of the plague and tended to patients, though that wasn't his primary job then. He had differing opinions about how patients should be treated. He did not bleed his patients, as was common among other plague doctors. Rather, he encouraged people to practice good hygiene and to remove infected bodies from the streets. Nostradamus is known for creating a rose pill, which we know today was rich in vitamin C, that gave some relief to patients with mild cases. He had a better track record than many other doctors, but that probably has more to do with the clean environment, low-fat diet, and fresh air that he encouraged, and not as occult practices that people would blame later. It was common in the Middle Ages to believe that God sent illness, especially the plague because he was unhappy with people. This led to people trying to make amends with God. They would do this by self-flagellation or whipping themselves, in an attempt to atone for their sins. If they were already too sick and weak to do it themselves, they would sometimes ask the doctor to do it for them. When this self-flagellation did not work to appease God, people searched for someone else to blame. Unfortunately, this led to many Jewish and Muslim people taking the blame for the appearance of this illness. They would often be driven out of an area to try to please God. Though this, of course, did nothing to get rid of the plague. The only thing that did work to get rid of the plague was time. Once an individual was infected, there wasn't much that could be done to determine if they would live or die. Doctors did many things to try to save them, but were often unsuccessful in doing so. They were, however, quite successful at leaving their mark on medieval and enlightenment history. What did you find most surprising and creepy about these doctors of old? If you liked this video, like and subscribe for more. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video.